Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to look at this model I recently painted, the Crimson Crocodile from the new Gambler's Chess expansion for Kingdom Death Monster. This is the one of the first monsters you'll fight in the new campaign and at first I thought the monster looked a little bit goofy. I was not a big fan but after spending a crazy amount of time painting this thing I actually began to fall in love with a lot of the details that can be found on this monster. So sit back and relax as I walk you through how I painted this. So after getting a quick little base coat on it, I went and I mixed some brick red with some purple to get this foundation for all the fingers that line the back of the crocodile's uh, neck and back as almost like a crest. So I'm going to just get a nice solid coat going. Again, you don't have to use an airbrush for this, but it really does speed things up. If you want to see how to do this without an airbrush, you can do this through wet blending. I recently made a video on that. In fact, you could see uh, what the result of my wet blending down there on the back that I was just about to spray over. Um, so again, if you don't have an uh, airbrush, check out my previous video and that will tell you how to get your, your model ready to be painted using a different method. After I put in that initial dark red purple color, I'm coming back with an arctic blue, which is kind of a light bluish gray. And I'm hitting the upper portions of the sides there and just going over a little bit of that red that I sprayed. So there's, you know, a little transition between the gray and the red using very thin coats so that you, you still do see the red underneath of this gray color. And then from the bottom, I am taking a pastel blue and I'm undershading the model. I'm hitting all the places I think that will be in shadow. This is my preferred method of dealing with grays and whites is actually using a blue as the shadow. I think it, it looks pretty nice and pretty natural. After we got the shade color down, I'm now airbrushing a pink flesh tone over top the darker purple red skin tone that was the base. Now here I'm going back and I'm going to start glazing the, the skin along the side of the crocodile here with, uh, right now I'm using a darker gray, it's a violet gray, really trying to cover up some of that overspray of that red that I, I got into some portions of the model. I'm also going to use some of this gray to outline some of the shadows along the side of the model. As you can see um, on the model there are little ridges, so I'm lining this dark gray alongside of those ridges really amplify them for highlights. What I did notice about this model is on the back side, uh, near the tail, there aren't very many of these ridges anymore. The skin folds kind of stop, and it looks kind of weird that half the model is very, well, has lots of these folds, and the other doesn't. So I did end up painting kind of my own folds into the back, so I thought it looked strange. So that's one of my main critiques of this model. It seems like the first half of the model, incredibly detailed, looks really good, and then second half there isn't much to work with now we're finally going in with some of the pure arctic blue and we are going to uh be doing our first round of highlights now after after setting our shadow with uh with that kind of darker violet gray so again this this on camera it shows up just as kind of a a, a light gray but it has some more blue tones when you see it in person so it's a it's a really cool color i like to use this as Kind of uh, my lighter gray colors on my models. Here again on the back of my model again since there's not much detail to work with. I'm making my own ridges on the back here by just doing little striations up and down uh, to give the illusion that there are folds in the crocodile skin. So now I'm highlighting even further. I've mixed a little bit of a yellowish off white into that arctic blue. And again, I'm hitting the top of those folds along the side of the crocodile, hitting less and less area as I layer it up. So I continue adding white into the mixture, getting lighter and lighter, hitting less and less of the model. I am going to work up to almost a pure white, but the pure white I'm going to only stipple on there and only small portions. I, I just want to put a little bit of white. I do want the model to read as a uh, as kind of this this white crocodile um in the at least the art for the crimson crocodile he does have what appears to be white skin but i do want it to have the, like these nice blue undertones just to give it uh the give the model uh some nice contrast and i don't know some cool tones 
as I'm getting closer and closer to pure white, I'm thinning the paint down quite a bit. And you know, I, I wanted to make a little bit more detail, especially on the legs here, because uh, again, there wasn't much detail, at least on some of the hind legs. So I just made some little striations with that um, highlight to make it look like, again, there's some folds there on the back leg. And then I'm just doing little motions, little stippling, hitting very, only the top kind of areas of those ridges. And now I'm going to go in with some pure white and I'm going to hit kind of in the middle area along the side where, where his skin is starting to bend. And I'm just hitting with that pure white to really draw your eye into the middle of the monster. So now we're going to go and worry about the fingers that line the neck and back of the crocodile. Here I just made a, a glaze or a wash of pretty much that, that dark purple red color. And I'm going back over it. I felt that when I airbrushed the pink on there, got it a little too light. I wanted to work up a little more subtly up to that uh, pink flesh color. And I also noticed that uh, I, there wasn't great coverage of that pink flesh color. So I'm just going back in and toning it down with this dark red wash. So now I'm just subtly layering. I took some of the pink flesh and mixed it into the burgundy red. And I'm going to be hitting most of the fingers with this color. Anything that would catch light, only leaving that really dark burgundy red in the uh, recesses in between the figures and... Uh, in between some of the skin folds along the neck. I'm also going back and reinforcing some of that, that transition area between the grayish white skin and the red. I want there to be, it look like, almost like the, the pink flesh of the fingers are leaching into the skin of the crocodile, almost like it's a parasite or something. So I want a very, a very nice smooth transition between that, uh, that red and gray color. Now I'm going in with the pure, almost pure pink flesh, doing uh, little striations uh, as a way to quickly paint the fingers. If you were to go into a lot of detail with all these fingers, it would take forever. I think I probably spent nearly a hundred hours on this model and I could have spent a lot more, especially on these fingers. But one way to get some quick texture and contrast so again, do little uh, stipples and striations along the finger. I'm not painting them all in great detail, but as you, you know, when you step back and look at the model, it does look like each finger is, is pronounced just by quick once over, little stipples, striations, highlights in that manner. So now we're gonna highlight the fingers even further by adding a little light skin tone into that pale flesh. And we're gonna stipple only the areas we really want to draw your eye to, which are gonna pretty much be the knuckles and the fingernails of each finger, spending as little time as possible on each finger. Again, you could spend an eternity painting all these little fingers and there's even faces beneath the fingers, which we're pretty much gonna ignore because they're rather hard to see. Next, I added a little bit of ivory into our pink flesh and light skin tone mixture. And again, I hear I'm only going to hit, only do little dots, little stipples on the knuckles and the fingernails to really draw your eye and give each of the fingers some nice contrast. So next up, I decided I was going to do the feet a different color. Again, I, I really want your eye on this monster to be caught in kind of the, the center where I spent all that time in the middle of the monster, really accentuating all the folds of its skin. I felt if I could break up some of that blue and white on the model, uh, it might it might uh, help the look of the monster. And so I took some of that burgundy red and I'm going to be wet blending it into that bluish gray color. Starting off, I'm just going to wet blend uh, that, uh, that pastel blue in there, get a little bit of a purple color and keep then uh, blending in the arctic blue to get a lighter color until I get a nice smooth transition between that red to the gray. It's uh, I find it's not an easy transition to get. It turns out going from a dark red to like almost a light gray is uh, pretty drastic, especially not a lot of space. But uh, I would do uh, do a layer, uh, futz around with it for a few minutes let it dry, wet blend it again until I got something that I thought looked halfway decent. 
and that I cleaned it up with some glazes to again give a, a pretty a pretty solid transition between those colors. After I got a blend I was happy with, I'm just going back and highlighting his fingers and toes with pretty much the same formula I use, recipe I use for the fingers on top. Just mixing in some pink flesh into the burgundy, working my way up with the light flesh until it pretty much mimics kind of the tones we got going at the top of the monster. Now here we're just uh, highlighting up a little bit higher with some of that pale skin. Focusing more on the top regions of the leg here so that it'll blend into the gray color a little bit better. And then also to break up some of the, the white color on this model, I'm going to all these little boils that the monster has all over his skin. And I'm going to be painting that with the same burgundy to light flesh skin tone that we have done on the rest of the model. Next, we're going to be focusing on his tail, which I spent a ton of time on. It was hard for me to get a result I really liked. Uh, but I started by even going darker than the flesh recipe I've been using. I, I decided I'm not going to follow that flesh recipe. I'm instead going to go from a dark purple to a pretty bright red there. So I just took the purple and I'm highlighting the areas uh, at the base that I think will be in shadow. And then I'm wet blending in with to that purple pretty much pure scarlet and working those colors back together to get a nice transition between the two. I then mixed in some orange into my scarlet and now I'm hitting only the tips of the tail with that orange color. Also using the side of my brush to help catch some of those, those lines or ridges on the back of the tail. Now I'm highlighting with pure orange instead of the red orange mixture hitting less and less of the tail. For the highest highlight, I actually took some yellow and mixed that into the orange to make a very light, bright orange. And for this, I'm just using the side of my brush and hitting the ridges on the tail that I think will be catching the most light. Next, we basically just need to finish up all the little details that are left over, the teeth, the eyes, that sort of thing. So I'm going to do the teeth next by just going and taking a dark, I think it's like an ochre yellow, and it's it's basically like a brownish yellow, and I'm going to use that to base coat all of his teeth. We're then going to mix some buff into that dark brown yellow, and layer that onto the teeth, hitting less and less of the teeth as we go. From then on, we're going to just hit the about half the tooth with some pure buff. I think this is a nice recipe to give kind of like, I don't know, a decayed look to teeth, uh, makes them look pretty kind of gross and yellowed and menacing. Now I, I mix it a little off white into that buff and I'm only going to be hitting the top of the teeth, give it a, give it a bit of a highlight. And then the final touch is just put a dot of pure white at the very tip of each tooth. So now we're going to go and paint the eyes and I really struggled with the color, uh, color theme that I wanted for the eyes. I think, again, the model is kind of goofy looking with this tongue lolling out of its mouth. So I wanted to do something a little menacing for the eyes. So I decided to go with kind of a black eye with a, a bluish iris uh, to, again, look, make the model at least look a little bit more menacing. So I'm going to hit the center of the eye with some Arctic gray. It's that bluish gray color. I'm going to leave a little dot of black in the middle. Next, I'm just going to add a little bit more white into there, pure white into that Arctic gray. Just uh, kind of make little dashes coming from the the inside of the eye out to, to make it look like, you know, I guess a, an iris. And here I add a little bit more white into that mixture, even just stippled a few dots around the center. I then went and painted all the teeth. There's kind of a secondary mouth on either side of the neck here. So I just went and used the, the tooth recipe from before. Next, it was time for the tongue. I decided uh, I got to kind of break up the colors. It'd be nice to have uh, a really dark color. So kind of matching the eyes, I went with a, a black, blackish gray. So I, actually, this is called green gray. It's by uh, scale 75, but it's very, very dark, almost black. And then I mix some pastel blue into that very dark green gray to get almost, it almost looks like almost tire color to it. And I'm just doing little striations, give a little texture to his tongue. 
and I'm just going to keep highlighting up by adding more and more uh, white and I'm also going to add some pastel green into the mix so we get a nice nice little mixture between the two pastel colors of blue and green as I'm adding more and more white into this mixture you can see how it's reading a little bit more green which I end up liking I was more thinking of wanting to highlight it as a, a blackish color but no I, I actually ended up liking the green tones that the highlights ended ended up taking here on the tongue so now we are going to go ahead and work on the base for our monster now that it's finished and for for this base i just took a bunch of plaster head molds that i've accumulated over the years and i'm gonna I made it kind of this earthy yellow which i think will uh, contrast well with the bluish skin on the monster um, in the lore, the Crimson Crocodile lives in kind of this blood pond or swamp. So I think the yellow will also look good with the red red colored resin I'm going to be pouring on top of it. Uh, but to give it some more uh, some more variation, because I thought it kind of was too monochromatic this base, and to better match with the monster that does have a lot of blue tones, I decided to make the outcroppings of the rock kind of this a bluish stone look. So I just went and I took some of my dark blue mixed it with that grayish blue arctic blue color uh, as a base coat and i'm going to cover all these faces on these rocks with that it also help you pick out the fact that they are their faces on there some of them just kind of look like rocks with the uh the, the more brownish yellow coloration so then we're just going to highlight up with that grayish arctic blue color covering up most of that darker blue so that you only get a faint faint trace of it left behind adding now some off white into that mixture getting lighter and lighter adding more white here so that it's we're almost hitting pure white hitting less and less of the face only hitting the cheeks and some of those ridges at the top that uh, where the broken rock is then going in with the pure white and just really emphasizing the top of the cheek the eyelids things like that the edges of the nose and then we're we'll be done with this so now we got to pour the resin. We're just using a two-part epoxy resin here. Pouring in some some uh, drops of crimson ink with some sepia. I find that makes usually a pretty good dark red blood recipe. But as always, as I'm looking at it here, I'm thinking, man, that is way too bright. That it's going to be like a pink blood pond. And so I ended up having to put more sepia and more ink in there to get the tone that I wanted. But as I often find... I put too much of the ink in and then most of the details that I put on the base are now going to be obscured by the resin because the resin is going to be so dark. But at least I'll get the color I wanted. But again, I spent a lot of time kind of detailing the base and you're not really going to be able to see much of it once uh, the resin dries. So I just dammed it up using some uh, some epoxy resin tape. Often I think this is used for people doing epoxy resin on tables, but it, it works well for this as well, for molding. And then I went as it after I poured, and I'm getting all the, the bubbles out of the resin by using a lighter and just uh, going over it. As you see, it kind of just uh, melts away the bubbles. So you got to be careful not to light your, your tape on fire, uh, but it's a good idea to, to help clear up the resin. All right, and so with the uh, the resin dried, this is what we got. I also sanded down the edges and polished it, added a little bit of ripple effects onto the top of the uh, resin here with some Mod Podge, and we got our base, and all we got to do now is attach our crocodile to it. So in the end, I was really happy with how this model turned out. Again, out of all the models in the Gambler's Chest, uh, going into it, I thought this would be my least favorite, but as I spent more and more time with the model and saw all the amazing details, and as I started highlighting, especially the skin, I really fell in love with this model. I think it's really cool, um, and I look forward to uh, to facing him in, an, in my new Kingdom Death campaign. The mechanics for this boss fight look really cool as well, and hopefully... You enjoyed watching this. I plan on making a video for each of the monsters in Kingdom Death's Gambler's Chess. I think there's so many cool sculpts. There'll be a lot of different ways for me to really push my painting skills 
to the limit as I paint these beautiful models. Anyways, thanks for being here and watching this. I know I haven't put out very many videos recently. Uh, life's pretty chaotic for me with kids and work and dogs and things, but uh, I hope to put out a, a few more throughout the year, and I hope you'll stop by each time and watch them. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.